بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Today's session is going to be a continuation of the previous session of last Saturday We started talking about belief in the messengers uh, Today I would start off by uh, giving a, the definition of what a prophet is and what a messenger is. What's the difference between a prophet and a messenger? The scholar said that, uh, well, starting off, we have to say that uh, this issue, the scholars regarding it have differed. But it seems that the predominant opinion is that the definition of a, a messenger is that he is the one who came with a new set of laws, with, with a new legislation, a new sharia, uh, that he was uh, commanded to convey to people. Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ Indeed, we have sent our messengers with clear proofs and sent down with them the scripture and the balance of justice. Of justice. Now, uh, a prophet, on the other hand, is the one who was sent to convey or uh, he was commanded to convey an already existing sharia, an existing sharia from messengers before him. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna anzalna at-tawrat fiha hudan wa nur, yahkumu biha al-nabiyyuna al-ladhina aslamu lil-ladhina hadu. Indeed, we sent down the Torah, which was guidance and light. The prophets who submitted to Allah, judged by it for the Jews. So Allah Azza wa Jal sends whomever he wills with whatever he wills. And Allah Azza wa Jal favors and distinguishes uh, the prophets and the messengers in rank and in virtue. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Tilka rusul fadlna ba'dhum ala ba'd. We have chosen of the messengers, some of the messengers, and uh, preferred and favored some of them over others. Amongst the favors Allah Azza wa Jal had bestowed uh, upon some of the messengers uh, is that he gave some of them the ability to tolerate more than others. Now all messengers have uh, gone through difficulties and hardships and uh, people resisted their call, people re rejected them, belied them, denied them. Uh, so they all suffered. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that on the Day of Judgment, some prophets would come and they would have no followers. No one had believed in them at all. Not a single person. And that's heartbreaking. You know, when you go and you call people and call people and call people... That saddens you. As a messenger, it saddens them because they're keen on guiding people. So some of these messengers, Allah Azza wa Jal called Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, uh, messengers with uh, a strong will uh, and power and determination. Who are these? As Allah Azza wa Jal instructed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and when he said, فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُلُوا الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ So persevere patiently, as did those with strong will and power and determination. Who are these uh, messengers of, uh, or who are the ones who are called أُلُوا الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ They are five. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, and Isa alayhim salatu wa sallam. And they were given this name because they were amongst all the messengers and prophets, the ones who persevered through the harm and, and, and difficult times and the afflictions and the adversities and the, the rejection and the, the evil of their people. And the burden of calling people towards Allah Azza wa Jal more than any other messenger and prophet who was sent by Allah Azza wa Jal. Regarding our, our uh, messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, 
his book and his sharia. The best favor bestowed upon humanity by Allah Azza wa Jal was sending Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his book, Al Quran, and the legislation. Allah Azza wa Jal actually reminds us often in the Quran by saying, "Laqad manna Allahu ala al mu'minin if ba'ath fihim rasulan min anfusihim yatlu alayhim ayatihi." ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين. Indeed, Allah has conferred great favor on the believers by sending a messenger from among themselves, reciting to them his revelations, purifying them, and teaching them the book and wisdom. The wisdom here is referring to the Sunnah. For indeed, they had previously been clearly astray. The legislation of Muhammad sallallahu and his book, the Quran, were not addressing only humans. Rather, he was sent sallallahu alayhi wasallam to address mankind as well as jinn, and his message, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his book and his Sharia, is mandatory upon human beings and jinn, they are all obliged to follow and adhere to it. Allah Azza wa Jal informs us, and this is reported in uh, Al-Bukhari, the story of jinn listening to the Quran. This was when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leading the companions in, in the Fajr prayer on one day, and some of the jinn had come and they actually listened to what he وسلم, recited and said, as Allah informs us, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا يَهْدِي إِلَى الرُّشْدِ فَآمَنَّا بِهِ وَلَنْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا Say, O oh Muhammad, now, Allah Azza wa Jal had informed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with what happened because jinn cannot be seen in their original form. It has been revealed to me that a group of jinn listened to the Quran and said, indeed we have heard an amazing recitation of the Quran. It guides to the right path. So we believed in it and we will never associate anyone with our Lord. So this, uh, these two verses inform us that jinn listened to the Quran and they had believed, confirming that the message of Muhammad وسلم, was not only to human beings, but rather humans and jinn alike. Now after the uh, message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commissioned after his prophethood and messengerhood it does not avail the Jews and the Christians the claim of them believing in Musa and Isa and the Torah and the gospel because when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent his message overruled and surpassed all previous messages and messengers. And that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was the final messenger from Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Quran was the final divine message sent down from Allah Azza wa Jal to mankind. So there is no way leading to guidance except by following Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our messenger. And there is no way Allah azza wa jal can be worshipped in the way he wants, except through the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the Quran and the legislations came in the Quran and the Sunnah. And there is no way, way leading to Allah and to knowing Allah azza wa jal, except by following our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his message. Denying or rejecting or belying the, the messengers. Part of our belief is that anyone 
who belies or rejects a single messenger has actually denied or rejected all messengers sent by Allah Azza wa Jal. Listen to what Allah Azza wa Jal says. كَذَّبَتْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ الْمُرْسَلِينَ كَذَّبَتْ عَادٌ الْمُرْسَلِينَ كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Allah is talking about the people of Nuh and Ad and Thamud. And he said they have rejected or belied the messengers. While in fact, they only rejected or belied their own messenger. So the people of Nuh belied Nuh and Ad and so on. However, Allah Azza wa Jal described them to have belied and rejected all messengers, not only theirs. Because disbelieving in one is exactly the same as disbelieving in all. The reason being, their message is one. Their call is one. Their mission is one. Worship Allah alone and associate none with Him. And because Allah Azza wa Jal, who sent the one that you're rejecting and belying, had also sent all the previous messengers. So when you deny or belie or reject any of them, you have actually rejected all of them. Allah Azza wa Jal says, and the one who does so is a disbeliever because he uh, actually does not fulfill one of the pillars or articles of faith, which is belief in messengers. Allah Azza wa Jal says, الَّذِينَ يَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يُفَرِّقُوا بَيْنَ اللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَيَقُولُونَ نُؤْمِنُ بِبَعْضٍ وَنَكْفُرُ بِبَعْضٍ وَيُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَّخِذُوا بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ سَبِيلًا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ حَقًّا Indeed, those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and wish to discriminate between Allah and His messengers and say, we believe in some, and disbelieve in others, and wish to adopt a way in between. They are indeed the true disbelievers. And therefore, whoever believes in a, mess in a, in a single messenger and rejects another is actually rejecting his own messenger whom he claims to have believed in. Allah Azza wa Jal described the believers by saying, آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله Indeed, the messenger has believed in what was revealed to him from his Lord, and so have the believers, the companions. All of them have believed in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers, saying, we make no distinction between any of his messengers. The following point after that is support from Allah Azza wa Jal to his messengers. Allah Azza wa Jal sent messengers, as we mentioned in the first session, addressing the belief in uh, messengers. We said that Allah sent them as humans to humans. So people would not have an excuse that they were not like us and we could not follow into their footsteps. And therefore, they needed support from Allah Azza wa Jal uh, to counter this vicious rejection of their people. And thus Allah Azza wa Jal supported them with miracles. Miracles are supernatural abilities or events that Allah Azza wa Jal granted his prophets and messengers as a way to prove their truthfulness and sincerity and to prove that what they have 
and what they're calling people to is the truth. The Prophet وسلم, said that this is mentioned in uh, the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, there has never been a prophet amongst the prophets except he was given a sign, a miracle proven his uh, prophethood and messengerhood. That when it is seen and observed, it calls the one witnessing it to believe in it. So all prophets and messengers were supported by Allah Azza wa Jal, by, by miracles from Allah Azza wa Jal, supporting the, the messengers and the prophets. And this reflects uh, how fair Allah Azza wa Jal is, how merciful Allah Azza wa Jal is to humanity. Why am I saying this? When Allah Azza wa Jal supports the messengers and the prophets with such supernatural abilities or events which cannot be done by normal human beings to prove to people that this is an eye-opener believe in these messengers they are from me they are calling to me they are leading to me guiding you to me so that no one would have an excuse that, ah, uh, how could we have believed in these people? They were claiming something. So these uh, miracles came as uh, supportive tools helping the messengers fulfill their mission of calling people to Allah. Now, to the most part, these miracles were having the nature of something which the people uh, who, to whom the, uh, the specific messenger was sent mastered. For example, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was sent to his people, at his time, magic and magicians were the top of their time. They, Pharaoh had uh, magicians who had different abilities. So it was suitable to send Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with something that can challenge that to prove his message alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah azza wa jal gave him the uh, ability of throwing his stick and it turned into a snake. He stuck his hand and took it out and it was bright white. Now magicians, uh, the magicians knew that this was not magic and therefore they immediately prostrated to Allah and believed. Isa on the other hand, during his time, people had mastered uh, medicine. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave him his miracle to be something of the same nature. So Allah Azza wa Jal, with his power and will, gave him the ability to cure so, the, the leopard, to cure someone who is born blind, to bring back life to dead people, and all with the will and power of Allah Azza wa Jal. Our messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent to the most eloquent people in the Arabic language. And Allah Azza wa Jal sent to them an unlearned messenger with a book that challenged them in that which they mastered, the Arabic language. And he challenged them to bring the like of the Quran and then 10 and then one surah of the Quran uh, to all of which they failed the challenge and could not. And this challenge remains until the day of judgment for someone to bring something the like of the Quran and challenge it. Now this was in general, however, this was not consistent all the time. There were incidents <clears throat> when different uh, messengers had different uh, miracles that were not in line or did not have the same nature uh, of 
what their, their people mastered. For example, the disciples requested uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, to bring down from the heavens a table spread with food. And he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal. The people of Salih requested that he brings out of a rock a she camel. So he called upon Allah and Allah Azza wa Jal brought for them from a rock a she camel that came out. For our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, the, 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 the moon had split, water gushed forth from between his fingers, and many other miracles the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. So the point here is that not all the time the miracles had the same nature of what uh, their people, I mean the messenger's people, mastered. The last two sections of today's session, uh, is, they're going to be addressing the fruits of belief in messengers and the implications of belief in messengers. Uh, amongst the fruits of believing in messengers is that one fulfills one of the articles and pillars of faith and thus saves himself from being described a disbeliever or leaving the fold of his faith. Uh, from the fruits of belief in messengers is that one leads a blissful life and if he adheres then he is promised to be rescued on the day of judgment from the wrath and punishment of Allah which is uh, promised to those who don't believe. Now belief here includes all the pillars and articles of faith. Uh, amongst the fruits of belief in messengers is that especially now we're talking about the final message and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One would know his Lord, know all he needs to know about his Lord through his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and thus come closer to him subhanahu wa taala and love him more. When you believe in, in the messengers, you actually feel how great the care of Allah Azza wa Jal and mercy uh, are towards his slaves. Because by sending these messengers to them to clarify what Allah wants from them and explain the legislations Allah Azza wa Jal wants them to adhere to and abide by, and give them glad tidings if they fulfill and adhere and warn those who might disbelieve or believe but then relax and get lazy. All of that reflects the love of Allah, the care of Allah Azza wa Jal to mankind and that Allah Azza wa Jal does not want to punish us. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, "Ma yafal Allah bi adabikum in amantum, in shakartum wa amantum." What would Allah Azza wa Jalla do, meaning benefit, by punishing you if you're grateful and believe? So Allah Azza wa Jalla does not want, did not create us to punish us. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Wallahu yuridu ayyatub alaykum." Allah Azza wa Jal wants to accept your repentance, wants to be merciful towards you. So Allah Azza wa Jal, this is what He wants. He wants to be merciful towards us. However, we slack off, we relax, we become lazy, we weaken and follow the whispers of the devil and follow our low selves our whims and desires. But Allah does not want us to do that and He does not want uh, to punish us. Allah Azza wa Jal shows His love by delaying punishment until the day of judgment. He gives us the chance all our lives because Allah Azza wa Jal is capable of punishing people in, in, in this life, in this worldly life. Allah Azza wa gives respite until people, because people might repent, might come back. And when they do, then they become deserving of His forgiveness and pardon and 
mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, uh, the implications of belief in messengers. Believing in a messenger, as we mentioned, implies that you believe in all messengers and not differentiating and discriminating between them. You believe in them all. And if you remember, some of them were mentioned, 25 by name, and there are many more who were not mentioned. So we believe in all of them, whether we knew the names, so we believe in these by name, or we did not know the name, so we believe in them in general, that there were other messengers and prophets uh, which were, uh, who were sent by Allah, but we believe in them, despite the fact that we don't know their names. We must believe, believing in messengers implies that we believe that the highest in rank amongst the messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal and the final of all messengers, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is Muhammad. And we say that he is the best in rank because Allah Azza wa Jal favored him, as we mentioned in the verse earlier, that Allah Azza wa Jal favored some of them over others. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the best in rank amongst all messengers and prophets. The impl another implication is that we must believe that the message they had or the messages they had were true and that their call was unified. Believing in Allah alone, worshiping Allah alone and not associating anything or anyone with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must also believe that they had perfectly and completely conveyed the messages they were commanded by Allah Azza wa to convey. And we must believe in everything they conveyed on behalf of Allah Azza wa We must also believe that they were the most perfect people with regards to manners, to knowledge, to action, to virtue, and that Allah Azza wa distinguished them from the rest of the people. Believing in them implies that we obey them and we adhere to the legislations they came with each nation at the time of their messenger or prophet. However, with the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final messenger with the final message, all of that was overruled and people are commanded and will be held questionable about adhering to his sharia, ah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must believe that there are, they are infallible with regards to the message they conveyed from Allah Azza wa Jal and with regards to committing sins and disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. They're infallible, they don't disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. Believing in them implies that we follow into their footsteps try to imitate them in their manners and how they conducted themselves. Believing in them implies that we love them, glorify them, praise them with that which they deserve and worthy of. Because the reason we must do that is that they conveyed the message of Allah They took us from the darkness of disbelief into the light of belief. They were the ones who guided us to Allah Azza wa Jal, who informed us about Allah Azza wa Jal, who were the means of, inshallah, us being rescued and entering Jannah on the day of judgment. And because they went through a lot to convey this message from Allah to us, they had to endure a lot of pain a lot of difficulties for me and you to be slaves of Allah and not to anything else. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, when I read the stories of the messengers and the stories of some of the companions and the, the difficulties they went through, the hard times they had to go through, 
the fear, the poverty, the hunger, the thirst. It's a lot that they went through. And had this not happened, me and you would not be believers now. But they went through a lot and they tolerated for the sake of their mission so that me and you would be people who believe in Allah Azza wa And I have glad tidings to all of you. Those who believe in, in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now or after his death rather, not just now, have a special rank. Those who practice, those who adhere to Islam, those who, who stick to the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said once when he was in a gathering with his companions, I long to meet my brothers. So the companions said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are we not your brothers? He said, No, you are my companions. My brothers are people who will come after me, who will not see me, yet will believe in me. He said, the reward of one of them is equivalent to 50 people, multiplied by 50. So the companion said, 50 people of their type. He said, no. Their reward is 50 multiples of yours. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You see how facilitated Allah made entering Jannah. You see how easy Allah made salvation on the day of judgment. All we have to do is just Endure patiently in sticking to the religion of Allah, adhering to the commands of Allah, following the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's it. We will see him in Jannah inshallah. We will be joined with him alayhi salatu wasalam, in Jannah inshallah, if we do so. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us. Allahumma ameen. Believing in messengers implies that we believe that there are human beings who used to eat and drink and walk in the, in the markets, in the bazaars, who used to uh, sleep, laugh, uh, become hungry, become thirsty, who used to get married and had children, who used to be uh, affected when, when harm is uh, afflicted on them, who suffered pain, who, who fell sick, and all other situations human beings, normal human beings go through. Final point uh, about the implications of believing in the messengers is that we must firmly believe that they had no divine qualities, no divine abilities, they had no control over the universe. They in themselves had no way of bringing benefit or causing harm. And that this is only done by Allah Azza wa Jal. And that none of them knew anything of the unseen except that which Allah Azza wa Jal informed them about. And this last point, I kept it to the end because it is extremely important and because we have some deviant sects who believe that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam had such divine qualities and control as a matter of fact some of these deviant sects believe that whom they call saints and, and pious people or scholars whom they follow possessed such qualities which is an utter lie because messengers did not possess such qualities. 
or abilities for normal people to possess such qualities. With this, we conclude the, uh, the session. Uh, I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us all from it.